because we're going to be intentional about our growing, okay? Hey everyone, welcome back to Build Your Faith. My name is Amaria, and so I am excited for today's topic. I'm excited for today's episode, if you're listening on podcast. Uh, before we get into it, though, I just want to remind you to please like, share, subscribe, leave a review if you're listening on podcast, and share this with someone who's going to be needing this to help them build their faith as well. You know, here at Build Your Faith, we are doing this together. We're building our faith in community. And so, yeah, if you don't want to have something good and just keep it to yourself right you want to be able to share not only the good news of the gospel or of jesus or whatever but you want to you want to give them advice and and tips for them to you know be able to make it in their day-to-day lives so definitely do that definitely share with somebody you love and you know and uh let's keep this going so everyone can be able to build their faith all right so let's get into today's topic so this is a topic that was on my mind for a very long time a very very long time and honestly it is very it's more so a cultural topic but i'm gonna give y'all a christian perspective okay but i've been noticing lately uh specifically more in women but it happens to men too um i think this is not a, a, a just a woman thing it's really just like both genders but i feel like it's very present in women because of patriarchy um but yeah i i noticed a lot of women think that their purpose is through a man a lot of women just think that life is about finding a man finding a spouse being in a relationship and that's it you know what i mean and that's a scary thing and honestly um i was talking to one of my friends right and she was telling me how her mom was telling her and her siblings you know her and her brothers and sisters like oh um I love y'all. Y'all are like my life. Like y'all are my reason of living. Y'all are my everything. Y'all are my purpose. You know what I mean? And and it's cute. You know, you're hearing your mom say that. Like that's really cute and touching. But as she was telling me that, like she was saying, like that kind of scared me a little bit because it's like, mom, you before you had me and your me and my siblings, like you had a life before us. You had desires, you had dreams, you had visions. And, you know, for, for a lot of parents, including her mom, a lot of that stopped when they had kids. You know what I mean? And I, I get, you know, putting your putting your putting aside yourself uh, for your kids, because that's like that's self that's selfless. Right. Like you are having kids. You want to make sure you're 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 able to provide for them. Like if you have to stop chasing your dreams and actually get a real job, depending on what you were doing, what your dreams were, you know, uh, drawing you to or whatever. And maybe it was not providing money and fin- and financial stability. So you had to go out and put that aside and get a job and provide for your family and your children. And I get that. And that's commendable 100 percent. But a lot of times after, you know, um, kids grow up, a lot of women specifically, they don't go back to their f- their first love or their purpose or their dreams and visions and etc. right? They kind of leave it and it's like, that's that. They're just, they're just defined or they're allowing their parenthood to, to be their purpose and they're, the, they're allowing their parenthood to, to be their definition. You know what I mean? And I also want to highlight before I get even more in depth about this, that there's nothing wrong with, you know, a, a mom or a dad or a parent, whatever, um, to say my purpose is, you know, me raising my kids. You know what I mean? Because I feel like, you know, that might not be everybody's purpose. And I can't wait to get into that in a second. But that might not be everybody's purpose. But it could be, you know, someone's purpose in this world. That could just be that, you know, your purpose is to raise your kids and be a good mom and spouse. And that is okay. If that is what God is calling you to do, that is okay. Because I remember a long time ago, um, someone telling me a story about, you know, two women who who died and went to heaven and they were in front of Christ and on Judgment Day and all that stuff. And, you know, one of the women was a boss. She was a boss. She was doing the thing. You know, she had businesses. She had a ministry. She was touching people left, right, and center. She went traveling the world and all that stuff. And so that was commendable, clappable. You know, you're hearing all the, the list of things this sis was doing. And you're like, oh, girl, yes, get it. You did that. You know what I mean? But then the other woman was kind of feeling sad. And she was like, man, I didn't do all of that stuff. Like, God, and, you know, as she was talking to God about what she was doing, she's like, God, all I did it was raise my kids you know and and had a, a husband and that's it you know and you might be looking like that like so that's it that's all you 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 reduced your life to like what 
But God looked at her and said, baby, you did exactly what I called you to do. Because look, you raised your children to fear me, to love me, and to worship me, and to praise me, and to have respect for me. You know, you you raised your children in, in, in Christianity and in loving Christ. And now look, they're able to now touch millions. One was a minister, one was a pastor, one was someone who was able to develop organizations to help further people. So you raised them right. If you had not been present in your, ch- your children's lives, if you had not been present as a mom, um, you know, maybe your children would had gone on to touch many, and then we mean would have had an issue. So you did exactly the purpose that you, what I called you to do, right? And so I thought that was beautiful. So that's why I wanted to mention and highlight before going further in this conversation is that you know you're you gotta see God for your purpose because your purpose could just be a mom. It, it could be, uh, but the thing is, it's not everyone's purpose to just be a mom and a spouse. You know, a lot of us, yes, that's an addition. It's great that, you know, you're married and you have kids, but your purpose is actually not just that or not that at all. It's something, again, it's probably an addition, but it's not that you are actually called to do greater things. And that's really what I want to touch on today, because, again, a lot of women in this generation, it's like, you want the man so bad. Or if I'm talking to the men who are listening, you want the woman so bad that you reduce, you know, your purpose and and your focus on just just that. That's why you find people like a lot of people just being in relationship after relationship after relationship, right? Because they want it so bad that no matter who it is, they're going to go after it. No matter what it looks like, they're going to go after it, right? And it's like are you doing what God is calling on you to do? You know what I mean? I know you have a des- I know a lot of us have a desire to be in a relationship and there ain't nothing wrong with that, right? A lot of us want to be with someone, want to be loved with some uh loved by someone, want to be want to experience relationship in marriage and all that stuff. A lot of us want that. And there ain't nothing wrong with wanting that, right? But we got to understand that there's there is that is one destination. That's not your whole destination, right? That's only one destination that will lead to uh, another part of the, the the chapter, another part of the def- destination that may not be the title of the rest of your life. It will just be a part of your life, but it wouldn't be the whole chapter, right? Because again, yes, you might have a purpose, but your purpose is not, again, being a spouse, so to speak. It, you know, your purpose might be, you know, developing that company, but you're doing it alongside your spouse that is very important for you. Uh, you, right? He, he, you and him are one. You and she are one. All of that stuff. But uh, that is not your purpose. Your purpose is developing that company or whatever. Whatever your purpose is, right? So, yeah, I think again, a lot of a lot of women, especially, they reduce themselves to just being, you know, just going after that relationship, right? And so, in the process of you tr- being with, you know being in relationship after relationship after relationship in the process of you basically looking and searching for love you're actually neglecting what it is that god god is god is calling on you to do in the process of you searching for relationship after relationship and love after love after love in places that god is not calling you to be in you're actually neglecting what it is that god has called you to do and that's the problem because if you're focused only on okay i need to find a man because i need to be married because this is what god wants me I I want to be that wife that prays with her husband and this and da, 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 da. I want to be that. So, you know, I believe God wants me to be in a relationship. So I'm going to go after it and I'm going to, you know, date and meet and this and that. And there ain't nothing wrong with dating and none of that stuff. But it's the problem is we put so much energy in that, that again, we don't even realize that God is calling us to do something else. You know what? While we wait, you know what I'm saying? You know, I think a lot of us are impatient and we don't want to wait on God. So we kind of try to rush God. You know what I'm saying? We try to we kind of trying to bypass God or do do what it is. We we try to be God in our own situation. Right. We kind of try. We kind of just try to fulfill what it is that God is. God has promised to us for ourselves. Right. And actually, that makes me think of like Abraham and Sarah. Because if you guys know um, the story of Abraham and Sarah and Genesis 17. Right. Um, Abraham and Sarah, they were given a promise. They were given the fact that, yeah, y'all are going to have some children or a kid. You know what I'm saying? 
And though they were like, I'm my old age. And that's another part I might, I, I, hopefully I remember to get into it a little bit later. But yeah, we, they're like, I'm my old age. I don't think so, Jesus. And they laughed and whatever. But you know, eventually they believed. But then time was ticking because they're like, wait a minute, I'm old. <laughs> and I don't know how much, much, how much more time I have over here on earth. So like really, God, where you at though? You know what I'm saying? Like, come on with the come on already. If you're going to do this, do it now. You know? And yeah, they what what they did is what a lot of us tend to do. They bypassed God. You know what I mean? They said, "Okay, well God promised me that I'm going to have a ch- a child. So, instead of waiting on him, let me go get a surrogate. Let me go um and find a man and I don't care if he's the one or not. I'm going to just have a child with that man because God promised me a child." No, baby, you need to wait. <laughs> you need to wait for God's go. And in the meantime, prepare but i'm gonna get into that a little a little later because i'm going ahead of myself but yeah we don't wait and so we bypass the plan of god and we try to do it ourselves we try to fulfill the promise by ourselves but on our own right and so when that happens is that god didn't say it's not gonna work it might just work you know if you look at this, the story and I, I encourage you to read the story in genesis 17 uh, about um sarah and abraham because you notice like they were like, you know what? God promised us a child, so we're going to go and, and find a way to get it. Sarah's so like, you know what, Abraham, baby? We want this kid, so let's bring in Hagar, Hagar. Let's bring in the servant, and you sleep with her, and you have a kid with her, and boom, we did it. We got it for God. We did it for God, and it worked, and God's promise and it gets fulfilled. And it's not that the kid didn't happen. It happened because God he, he allowed it to happen. It, he, it was not probably a part of his will, but he allowed it to happen, right? He will allow you to get with the man. He will allow you to get with the thing that you desire and that you're impatient about. But that doesn't mean that it was in his plan or his purpose. That doesn't mean that it was in his will. That doesn't mean that was his time. But you want it so bad? Hey, go ahead, get it. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to backfire in the end because if you know Ishmael and all that stuff, that, that backfired in the end. But that's another conversation. But yeah, like, so so we will go after something and and, got, and try to get it for ourselves. And God is like, if you just wait it, bruh, if you just wait it. And I think it goes back to us actually not trusting in God's word, like for real, for real. Like we don't actually believe and trust in God's word because if we did, we will patiently wait and say you know what god yes i want it to happen now but i'm gonna sit back and wait on you and a lot of us won't actually do that you know we're impatient when it comes to god and that just proves that we don't actually trust him like we say we do you know what i mean and so yeah yeah we just gotta patiently wait on god and the thing is later on she ended up having the kid she ended up having and it blew her mind and it's like yo god is getting ready to blow your mind things that you Because a lot of times we look at our situation and our circumstance and we are like, I don't think God's going to be able to do this because, you know, this is not really possible in today's society with science and everything. It goes against science. It goes against like human anatomy. It goes against like like the laws of this world and the laws of life and the laws of, you know, just the universe. So this 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 is not going to work. God is not able to do that. And then we end up doubting God and we put God in a box. But it's like we forget that God is a God who's able to do the impossible. He's able to blow our minds. Like when you put God in a box, you're limiting his power and you're limiting the power that he's able to manifest in your life. Because you're like, God, I don't think you could do that. Never mind, I'm going to find another way, you know? And so that's exactly, again, what Abraham and Sarah did. They were like, God, I don't think you're able to do this. So we're going to find another way. We believe in you, though. But I don't think you, I don't trust that you could do that. So we're going to find another way. And God ended up blowing their mind. And it's like, God is getting ready to blow your mind if only you waited. Just wait. So all that to say that I feel like a lot of women and men and people who are rushing into relationships because they have a desire to be in a relationship, my advice is for you to wait. Be patient. Because you might desire it, and God might may or may not give it to you. That's another part too. We got to seek the will of God for our lives. Like if God is saying yes, but wait, you better wait. Okay. If God is saying no, then you got to accept that. No, I know it's hard and it's hard. It's heartbreaking to hear sometimes because if you have a desire for love, you have a desire for a child, you have a desire to go to university, you have a desire for this, to get the job, the career, go on this path, go on this journey. You know, you have a desire for a lot of things, but God is telling you, no, it's like, man, but I want it. God, I want it. God, I want it. God, you know, and I know there's a meme that was going around a lot in the Christian community and in in, in, on social media about like, you know, this little girl with a teddy bear and she had a little cute little teddy bear and she's, and God is like, can you give it to me? 
can you give it to me? And then the little girl was like, no, God, but I love it. I don't want to let it go. Please let me let it go. And behind his back, little does she know that he had two teddy bears and even bigger ones at that okay and so it's like we don't know the plans that god has in store for us you're over there worried about what you want oh god i want this but god has greater in store for you but you don't trust him enough to let your plans go and it kind of goes back to my last episode it, it was actually not supposed to be aligned this way i feel like god is really speaking to people who who have problems letting go of the wheel and let it go of their plans like let go this is a word for someone let go of your plans let go of you know what you want and let god give you what he wants for you because it's greater it will blow your mind it's greater than what you want for yourself you might think you want that thing until god shows you what he actually has in store for you and you're like oh wait a minute god i don't want that anymore i want what you have for me you know what i'm saying but you got to trust him enough to like really allow him to do that if not you're never going to see your blessing you're never going to see your miracle you're never going to see that great beautiful mind-blowing thing miracle that god has in store for you because you're not able to let go so let go and so yeah like the thing is god might say you will have it but not now you got to wait right and so my question to someone who's listening today right like if god is telling you yes you're gonna have the thing you're gonna have the man the woman the the marriage whatever but you're gonna have it at 35 40 50 i know a lot of y'all gonna be mad at god i know a lot of y'all gonna be like but god you know everyone has that magic number uh we gotta get married at 25 or 26 if not god (laughs) we (laughs) mean you gonna have some issues yeah i feel like a lot of especially people in their 20s like we we just desire to be like married at 25 26 and god for a lot like imagine we all got married at 25 and 26 i feel like there would be more of uh an expectation if that makes sense i feel like a lot of us would probably just like do everything we would probably date as many people as we can because we know okay well i'm 24 now about time i find my husband now so then i, I get my life right you know what i'm saying because at 25 26 i'm i already know i'm gonna get married so let me do all the mess right now <laughs> let me enjoy my my single hood. let me enjoy these streets right now this hot girl summer this city girl you know lifestyle let me enjoy it now because i know once i reach 24 24 25 26 i'm gonna be wedded or something so let me enjoy it now but it's like you never really know when god is gonna you know match you up with somebody if ever he does and so if god is telling you okay no you're not gonna get married at 25 26 27 you're gonna get married at 30 you're gonna get married at 35 you're gonna get married at 50 a lot of us are gonna be mad with god and we're gonna try to be like well god i'm getting mad whether you like it or not so i don't know what you're gonna do about it and we put ourselves in positions with people that we're not supposed to be with we were never meant to be with them and then our marriage don't work out and our relationships don't work out if god is telling you you're gonna get married at 40 your answer needs to be like, I, this, I wish it was earlier, God, but you know what? I trust you. And because the thing is, there's a reason why God is letting us wait. Whether it's you waiting for five years, 10 years, or 20 years, God has a reason for us to wait. And this is my final point. Well, I hope, <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> but yeah, the reason for us to wait is for us to prepare, prepare, okay? And so, yeah, preparation is super important it's important y'all to to prepare because the thing is like it makes no sense you getting what it is that you desire but you're not ready for it you're gonna just mess it up you're just gonna break it you're just gonna not know how to use it right it's like kind of like getting an object you know you're buying something on amazon that you have to assemble you know you have to take the time to either watch the youtube video online or read the book the, the instruction manual if not you're just gonna be wasting time you're probably gonna end up breaking it or, or not knowing how to assemble it or and it's just gonna make you waste time when you could have just watched the video yes it's a little bit long it could be 10 to 20 minutes but you watch the video and then boom you get the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding of how to build the object right but the thing is if you don't if you rush and you're like oh, let me just I, I don't have time to watch this 20 minute video i'm just gonna go ahead and try to do it myself then you realize you could have just watched the 20 minute video and got it over because now you have the knowledge to, to actually build it versus now it's gonna take you an hour or two or a, a whole day because now you're trying to figure it out and then if you break it 
then it's gonna take even longer because now you gotta try to find a way to fix it or get another one you get what i'm saying and that's what we do in our lives but you gotta prepare you gotta prepare for what it is that god is calling on you to do to, to, well not even calling on you to do but you gotta prepare for what for to receive what it is that god uh is ready to deposit in your life right it's kind of like you know wanting water and not having something to put it in how are you going yes you're thirsty yes you want water but you don't have nothing to put the water in so how are you gonna drink it boo <laughs> you don't have a basket or, or nothing not a bottle or nothing to put it in so how are you gonna drink it so it's like you gotta make sure you got you're preparing yourself you gotta make sure you know a lot of us we have this like we love the idea of relationships and being with somebody else but we don't even know how to a be with ourselves loves our love ourselves right and we don't even know how to love other people or how to take care of other people or how to be a loving spouse to someone else you got anger issues and you that you have never resolved but yet you're trying to be with other people you do realize you're gonna chase them away because every little thing that they may do right is gonna make you snap and you're not gonna know how to communicate or deal with it or say to them nicely because all you know is cussing all you know is getting mad and getting angry because you 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 have not fixed that thing while you were single you have not fixed that thing while you were waiting, while you were preparing. You have not prepared for what it is that God is getting ready to deposit in your life. You have not prepared for it. A lot of us want to be married, but we have not prepared ourselves to know what it actually takes to be a spouse. And that's the problem, right? You got to prepare for it. You got to do it, right? If you desire it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, going to school, or, or I, I heard some actress say that. It's like, yes, I wanted to be an actress, but... I had to prepare to be an actress. I had to go to my auditions. I had to work hard and, and practice to cry when they say it's time to cry and, and, and laugh when it's time to laugh and feel the emotion. I had to practice that. Same thing with school. Like you're preparing at school for your career, but you're, you you got to prepare for that so that when you're in your career, like, you know, anyways, you put in all that hard work while you're in school, preparing, studying and doing all that stuff so that when you're in your career, career you know what to do. Amen. And so, yeah, it's the same thing with that. Like, if you desire that thing, you gotta prepare. You gotta know. Okay, this is what how to communicate. This is what not to do. This is okay. Uh, all of that stuff. And so, and those things are done in your single season. Okay. Truth be told, I mean, I know a lot of people say you could do that while you're in a relationship, and I'm not denying that. I think that you can, but I think a lot of times it's even better to do that while you are single because ain't nobody distracting you. It's just really you and God. A lot of us got to develop a relationship with God and develop our boundaries and all that stuff before actually getting with other people because, or else you're gonna have people leading you astray or leading you away, leading you away from your faith. Anyways, and all of that to say that I really want people to understand that while you're waiting. You know, while you're, yeah, while you're waiting, just make sure that you understand that it's not even just about preparation, but it's like, yes, if God is telling you, okay, you're not going to get married now, you're going to get married at 30, 35, 40, right, or above, um, it's not just about preparing for that, but it's also that, you know, you got to, I want you in that time frame to do your purpose to fulfill your purpose and, and and do the plan that I have for your life. Because if someone was in your life right now, they would have distracted you from doing that, right? C so I need you to do that now and you're going to see you're able to do much more while you're single. You're able to touch much more lives while you're single than versus when if if you were with someone else. And we see that a lot of times in people like because they're with someone they're in a relationship or they're married they're not even able to do what it is that god is calling them to do to to start the business because it's like oh but i gotta focus on my family and i gotta do this and it's nothing wrong with having family and a lot of people are able to juggle both well but a lot of people haven't are actually realistically a lot of people are actually struggling in that area let's be honest right and so yeah sometimes god is like i know that if i give you this now you're not gonna do your purpose and you're not going to do what it is that I have called on you to do. So these are things to keep in mind. The attitude to have with, when it comes to that situation is, you know what, God, I trust you. Whatever time frame you have for me, I trust you. And once you do that, it becomes easier. You accept it a lot easier. I know it's hard, easier said than done. But once it's done, like you're going to be like, yeah, God, I can see why you're making me wait. I love this. I, and I want and I desire for, you know, for relationship or whatever else. But I understand why you're making me wait. And waiting, ain't nothing wrong with waiting, bro. It, it, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew they, their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will walk and not be weary. 
they were running not faint right and so yeah man that those are some scriptures that you need to live by if you need to practice them memorize them in your head like do that but they are very important because you gonna realize them, the the beauty in waiting right and so that is really all i had to say today i hope this episode helped you oh i hope this helps you because this has been heavy on my heart because i feel like dang a lot of women a lot of men a lot of people struggle with this but i really really hope this helps y'all today and so love y'all thank you so much for tuning in i love y'all so much keep building y'all and we'll talk again in the next episode